Hi, it's Terry Dennery of the MathWorks. So in this video, we're going to get into to CAD import, and this is a really important topic, right? And so what I did was I, I built a four-bar linkage inside SolidWorks. Um, and you'll see that essentially the part shapes are much closer and the ability to connect them to what it would take to, to bring this to the real world. And that in a way, that's why I import from CAD tools are is such an important thing because this is where the truth is really formed on what the mechanical linkage is going to be and it's got this very important constraint which is it needs to exist in the real world and uh, as you begin to discover kind of the full capabilities of these tools you'll see that they facilitate the paths for part creation that takes place through 3d printing and just you know all the automated things that take place with machine shops to form parts as well um that 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 the cad definition what those parts are is essentially the origin for every bit of it okay so there's this idea of connecting into what i call the baseline design the truth of what the the device is going to be all right so for the most part that's all i really want to show for solidworks it's a fabulous tool and uh, it's a lot of fun to work with it but let's go ahead and get it now into Simulink, and the process for doing that will be to use uh, my favorite mechanical design tool, SimWise. All right. Now, the other thing that, that's pretty um, important with regard to this demo is that it's just fast, fast, fast. You can do this stuff so quickly. All right. And so anyways, what I'm going to do is let's just go ahead and open up that SolidWorks assembly. That we're just looking at and it just comes straight into simwise All right now one of the things about solidworks is they like to call uh the y they, they like to call the up axis y where we call it z right and so it comes in kind of in the incorrect orientation for what i need to do right and you'll see that as i hit run gravity's defined to move in that direction so of course there's a number of ways you might choose to fix this one of those be you know change your direction or your gravity axis but uh, the way i'm going to do it is let's 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 rearrange the assembly direction right and so let's make this oops si degrees for my units and now i can go into this part and type in 90 and i'll rotate it 90 degrees about the x-axis right so you can see that well that's not exactly what, what i want i want the whole assembly to rotate so we're going to introduce a very useful uh, capability called rigidly join the entire assembly, right? And so now when I rotate it 90 degrees, the whole assembly moves as I want it to. Now, one of the things I've been very attentive to is this idea of what I call the front view. And at least for me, the front view is staring down the x-axis. And this isn't exactly the orientation I want. I want it to be kind of flipped 90 degrees, right? And so let's kind of take care of that. And I'm going to do it by forming a joint, all right? And so I'm going to place a cord on my ground, and I am going to um, orient it exactly at the origin of the world frame, like that. And it's got the orientation, Rx, Ry, Rz are all equal to zero as well, all right? And so what I want to do is take this point, the center of that face, and that's going to be coincident with the world origin, all right? But um, I well, we'll see in a second. So what I want to do also, though, is I want to make its orientation consistent with the world position. And we'll see that currently that orientation for snapping to the center of that face has it um, rotated 90 degrees. Right? And so, again, to kind of accommodate this view I want to get it to, I would need to rotate it an additional 90 degrees. Right. So again, I've practiced this and I know that this is kind of the key to getting it where I want it to be. Again, let's position it in the world orientation. We'll make that 90. Apply, close. All right. And so now we'll just select these two. And you'll see I can right mouse click to create constraint. I will form a rigid joint. And I will move the entire assembly to that 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 uh, origin position on the world reference frame right and if i look at it now looks pretty good 
okay? And if I hit run, nothing fall, well, nothing moves, right? And so now's the time to unrigidly join. And let's just kind of finish this up with the joints that will accommodate what we need. And so I'm going to just double click on this pin, which is our other connection to the world reference. And so I'll, I'll fix its position. And we'll see everything falls except for those, those two pins. And so now let's go put the Revolut joints in. All right. And so I'm going to do a little trick I like. All right. And so I'm basically hiding everything except for these two. But what I really like about this is that these circular edges kind of facilitate rapid uh let me double click on the cord frame joint the cord tool and it will give me continued use of it and so i can very rapidly using the feature detection the tool place the frames where i need them to be now i have not formed joints yet but i'm going to kind of um take advantage of another um Well, advantage of having all the parts in the appropriate location. And what it means is I can form these joints uh, with a single frame, right? And so this one that's now, you can kind of see it right there. It's attached to the bar A. We're going to connect that to the pin that is currently hidden right now. And we'll see that by the faded yellow, All right? And so I'll go create and I'll make it a revolute joint. And essentially joints always are made up of two coordinate frames, but a new cord is being created for us, identically located to the one that I've selected, right? And with that, I have that working, all right? And I think I want that pin showing just, it just kind of looks good, looks better that way, all right? So, all right, and so next what I'm gonna do is get, uh, Oh, let's get this one, All right? Same kind of issue, All right? So this pin is kind of blocking my view. And so I'm go here, select the frame. It's attached to, to bar C. Create constraint, revolute. So we see that green cylinder. We hit run and we see essentially we got two inverted pendulums and eventually they do tip, All right? And so now, Let's get this last one and I'm gonna hide this bar just quickly to get them in. All right. And so that'll be a revolute. And this one will be a revolute as well. Show that. And this is where we now stand and we're almost there. Okay, and so for this last piece, what I want to do is I want to take this guy, B, and I want to take these two middle pins. So pin one, pin two. So that's my selection. I'm again going to visibility, hide all others. Oops, I don't need that one. So I'm going to hide that too. Oops, that's showing that this is the pin that I did want. So there's pin three. So anyways, good that we got visual confirmation. And you know, the point I want to make here is these these three, you know, essentially are all welded together. So you might as well think of it as one part. All right. And so the path to doing that is to insert that as a subassembly. And so I'm going to give it the very simple name of capital B assembly. Assembly. All right. And we're almost there. Okay. But we'll see that the final step is take that and rigidly join it, hit run. And then finally, let's just kind of go put our motor in. So clicking on pin one, I come to this little list showing what pin one's associated with, and we're gonna just turn that revolute joint into a motor. Now, I like to begin this process by just simply renaming it, but ultimately we have to do it by changing its definition. And so that's now a motor, and the whole thing rotates properly. I'm going to come up to this constraint and really prepare us for doing the whole motion genesis thing when we're ready, All right? So this thing here is a revolute joint. I know it because it shows up as a cylinder. And so let's change its name to, I think I'll call it sphere slot. Okay, so that means it can 
you know, change it into a spherical on a SWAT, and I'll call it loop constraint two. All right. And so again, there's a redefinition, and we talked about in a previous video that there's a redundancy by by representing that with a cylinder, which I like to address. You don't really need to, uh, but it certainly helps us as we move into motion genesis, especially with the automatic detection that hey, this is this is the one that we're going to uh, um, apply the loop constraint through, right? And so you'll see that it's got the little green line indicating it can slide about that axis. I hit run, and I think we're there. All right, and so uh, again, I'll go to the view that I like so much. All right, there we are. All right, and so let's go ahead and save it. We're going to see it's going to show up. You see MATLAB in the background right there. It's going to show up in that directory, as it does right there. And then finally, let's just go to Get Geometry. Got it. Okay. And let's import to simulate. And so while that's happening, I'm going to just go in and talk about a couple of things. You know, one is this idea of the one truth. So connecting into the baseline of the mechanical design is super important. And so we should all feed off of its definition as it occurs there, including our simulate models. And then the other point I wanted to make uh, is that SimWise is a really good tool for this. Okay. So our model's almost ready. But we'll see that as we kind of click on the, you know, um, file type that can be opened, and we're going to see all of them there. So Autodesk Inventor, Solid Edge, Katia, Pro Engineer. We'll see like Aces files and Parasolid files, uh, and Step files, and so forth. So, anyways, I think, uh, you know, did I make all my points? I wrote some notes here. Uh, I just say that the between connecting into the baseline and essentially getting the models created for us very rapidly um, that there are a lot of advantages of connecting into the CAD tools. And so we'll finish by just hitting the run button. And we'll show that this animation is going to be based on the true geometry as well. All right. And we see it right there. And we see kind of the um, Geometry as originating side SOLIDWORKS. I'll bring just a little bit of attention to this piece right here, which we know is the assembly we formed. We call it B assembly. And we can go straight to the block inside the Simulink model. And you'll see here that a new STL has been formed by our definition of that assembly. And I'll also just mention that the mass and center of mass location and the inertia tensor have all been updated with the, the, the reconfiguration, right? And as you move into import of assemblies that typically have hundreds, if not thousands of parts, this ability to essentially collapse or at least reduce a large number of parts into a single part, it's, it's absolutely one of the key ways of doing this. And certainly the idea of going in and creating your own joints very rapidly for the minimal set of uh, joints needed to rep represent um, your devices, your designs, um, facilitates, um, I'll just say, uh, um, better mechanical modeling and efficient mechanical modeling as well as efficient simulations because reducing it to the kind of the minimal description that you know you know that, that's needed um, is is going to make your simulations run real fast too so anyways thank you